today we are living in a very nice uh, new technology world. Um, if you look at the, the technologies appeared in the, uh, in the labs around the, the, the whole world, in the, in the universities, in the industry, they are changing the way we are living nowadays. But um, if we look at the, the living conditions, the real world we are living in, it's not every problems or challenges already solved. So if you look at um, the, the cities in China, like air pollution is still major problems, uh, making a lot of troubles to the general health care. So Chinese people, more than uh, hundreds of millions, are suffering all this and uh, decreasing their lifespan uh, down to several years. Um, another general issue is the global warming. Global warming is uh, making uh, fundamental changes on the global uh, ecosystems. The, the sea level is, is rising and the glacier is, is melting. So all these factors together, they are creating kind of unpredictable general uh, weather changes that can lead to the disaster that you can always see in the science fiction uh, movies. Energy issues is always the sword of uh, democratism around us uh, all the time. So based on the detection, all the uh, petroleum and the natural gases will be used up in the next 100 and several tens of years, no longer than that. So once energy crisis burst out, how can we survive with our uh, kind of a modern economy? Healthcare is a major problem for most of the people, but even just a very tiny insects like a mosquito, you know, it's, it's just annoying for most of us, but for the people living in the uh, tropical area, so it's, it's a major killer because they are the carrier of malaria. And even after several tens of years of, uh, of uh, international efforts, malaria is still killing hundreds of uh, people every day in Africa all the time. So we, are, we spend a lot of energy and resources to develop new drugs against the pathogens. Um, we can basically not alive without them all the day. But the problem is all the pathogens evolve all the time. So it's kind of arm race between antigen and pathogens, and we are kind of in, a, in an endless war uh, against them. So it's really the situation we are running uh, in a technical uh, innovation all the time, just like in, 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 a, in a kind of a cartoon. So the problem is that the world is developing so fast, how can we find solutions for all of these challenges? The only thing we can do is to find new paradigm of innovation and cultivate our gen next generation to be future innovators in the technical world. But the problem is that in our universities, all the paradigm or kind of pedagogy created uh, to train our students was adapted from the uh, kind of 150 years ago from the age of industrial revolution. So at that time, all the students are just uh, learning the knowledges and the skills and, and the fulfill the, the functions needed from industry. But nowadays, we need a new format of training because they, want, they need to do innovation all the time to, to face all the challenges. So in Tsinghua University, this year we started a new program called the Xin Center. It's a cooperation between Tsinghua and the Tel Aviv University in Israel to find out new solutions for this international innovation and help young generations. So the first thing we want to do with the Shin Center is to break the, the barrier between disciplines. So we want to bring students and faculties from different disciplines in university and, in, and people from industry to work together and conquer the general challenges that people are facing all the day. So the deep interaction between academia and uh, industry is very, very key for this program because usually in universities that we, we see um, Labs in university, they focus more on original science and the technology, and industry focus more on the tech transfer and commercialization of these technologies. But this feedback between academia and the industry is really uh, slow, so it's not sufficient, it's not effective enough to create new solutions for the world. So we do this cooperation between different people, between uh, different fields and backgrounds to find kind of a complementary resource to find new solutions. So in Shin Center, we really encourage people, including students and faculties, to come up with kind of out-of-box thinking, creative, really crazy ideas. Because you know, as Einstein always say, I mean, if an idea is not absurd, um, it's basically hopeless to change the world. So we ask students and faculties to really think and to take the risk to run into the kind of a cutting edge innovations with, a, with huge potential to, to uh, make the field to be changed. But how to make it that? I mean, the students are always suffered from this traditional educational system. So in Shin Center, we're trying to save them by giving them complementary resources and know-how, facility, technologies, and so on. So what we try to do is to create an international program to give them a new kind of a PhD 
uh, training. So it's, it's a kind of a doctor degree for innovation, basically. So to help them to get everything, not only locally from China, from Tsinghua, but also globally from other universities and industrial cooperators. So in this way, we hope we can find new solutions to get our young faculty, young students to be future innovators. So this comes to the topic of our discussion in, uh, in, in my session, which is about how to cultivate the next generation technical innovators. Thank you very much.